Just a couple videos back, I dropped a video on an interview that I did with Stephanie McPhail, who's the author of Being Loved Shouldn't Hurt, and she interviewed me from a man's perspective on healthy, blissful relationships. And we got a lot of great feedback from that, so I thought I'd take a couple more clips, in fact, about four or five more golden nuggets from that interview and give them to you. So that's what this video is going to be about. You're going to see a lot more clips of that interview. This is going to be very valuable for anybody who is uh, interested in gaining my insights on creating and having blissful relationships because I think they're a big part of healing and body transformation. So enjoy. <music> Uh, so tell us a little bit about your background. Just, you know, what, what is it that you do um, when you're not being interviewed by me? <laughs> well, the first, the first thing is, is um, I'm a man in love with my soulmate that I've been married to for over 13 years. And so my first, when people ask me, what do I do? Well, I'm a husband and I'm a father. And then I'm, I guess, I could say I'm a part-time entrepreneur. And um, one of the big, I mean, I have several different businesses, several different companies. I've created a lot of success over the past few years. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest, most important topics that I teach is the secret psychology of success. So it's how do you achieve everything you want in your life, including the best health, the best relationships, and uh, the, all of your financial dreams. And I'd say a good 50% of that revolves around my ability to create good, meaningful relationships. And I've been really lucky for a romantic side. Um, I, I, I nailed it the first time. I've never been divorced before. <laughs> I've only been married once and it happens to be with my soulmate. How do you deal with just the different people, the different perspectives? You're both strong individuals. I mean, they're both authors, you know, they've both experienced all these great things. How do you deal with that? Well, if we're talking about how do we deal with that as a husband and wife, mm -hmm. I mean, the most fundamental thing is to start with is to know that no matter what, I love her more than life itself and I know she feels the same way about me. Mm -hmm. So no matter what, we, we can totally argue, we can disagree completely beyond opposite sides of the table on any issue, mm -hmm. but still know at the end of the day we're going to love each other, we're going to respect each other, and that's not going to change. No topic of discussion is going to change our opinion of each other. And that, that's probably the most important part to really, really get down and secure. I think a lot of people, they, they're afraid to say what's on their mind or they're afraid to fully express the way they want to express because of some fear that the other person's going to stop loving them or some stuff like that. I mean, so, I mean that, that's got to be, that's got to be handled first. I mean, you've got to have a solid, solid confidence that no matter what, you guys are in it for the long run. And then that way there's no fear in um, sharing ideas, okay? We, we disagree on a lot of things. That's not what being in a healthy relationship is. It's not agreeing with everything. It's being able to share each other's ideas, see each other's standpoint, even, even if we don't see each other's standpoint, is still loving each other despite whatever the other person's opinion is. So Brooke and I, what we've got so strong from day one, we've had, from the day we met, was we've got the strongest, tightest communication of anybody we know. It, it's just, we, we can always talk to each other, we can share things with each other, even if it's like, oh my God, horrifying to the other person, it doesn't matter. We always know that in our relationship, we're in a safe place. So that, that's the first place. You gotta, you gotta have a safe place. You gotta be in a relationship where you're in a safe place, or because if you're not, I think, listening or, or observing oneself and how easy it is to communicate with the other, if you feel anxious about talking to the person, you don't feel safe around them. You don't feel safe around your relationship. That's not a judgment, it's just an observation, right? So you need to go back to the fundamentals, like, okay, do I, am I supposed to be in a relationship with this person or do we need to work on some other stuff first? Because if I'm, in, if I'm feeling insecure in any way about how much the other person may or may not love me, or if I might say something that's gonna change that. If that's an actual fear in my mind, mm -hmm. then I don't really have the strong relationship I may believe I have. Are there um, like forbidden ways of communicating or forbidden things that yes. you don't do to each other? Yeah, absolutely. The same stuff that you would never do to a friend or someone that you really care about. So, you know, no name calling, uh, no insulting, no trying to hurt another person mm -hmm. just because you have an idea. I mean, Brooke and I, we, we, have a, we have a strong sense of humor against each other. So, you know, we tease and make fun, but it's for the sake of teasing and making fun, not, uh, not for the sake of actually hurting. Because I've seen, there's a difference between arguing in a way where uh, someone 
may try to say an insult or say something in a way to actually hurt the other person or make them feel bad. That's, that is against our rules. Because That's what, like a red flag. Well, think right? about it. Like, what, when, when is it okay to hurt someone you love? Yeah. When? In, in any way. In any way. When is it okay to hurt someone you love? Mm -hmm. I see so many people playing games when it comes to communication. Like, with, like, they, like, if someone feels really strongly about the other person, do they tell them right away? I mean, is that the usual thing? Do they tell them right away? Listen, I love you, or I'm just head over heels. Or do they play some game where they let it wait for a little while? I mean, I, I think games is just the worst thing to do because you're starting off your relationship in an inauthentic way. I think that's, uh, you're setting yourself up right from the very beginning for a disaster. You gotta be brave enough to communicate you're with your with anybody you're dating with or yeah. anybody you're in a relationship with. So you gotta have number one the courage to be able to speak your mind mm -hmm. in a respectful way. You gotta be able to have the courage to share your feelings with someone, whether it's negative or positive. Because I think the biggest fear is that the other person's gonna leave them. If they yeah. say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing, they're gonna leave them. So who would be afraid of something like that? Well, someone who is insecure with their own self. Yeah. Once you've done the work on yourself, you know who you are, you're comfortable with who you are, uh -huh. and you've done your dating and you've done all that stuff. Yeah. You're like, I really like this about this person, this about that person. You start kind of picking out those qualities and you kind of have this mental list. If someone is lucky enough to be with me, because you should feel like it is an honor, this is your time, this is you know your time on this planet. So if someone's lucky enough to be with me, then these are the qualities that they're going to have. And when she found, I mean, I knew as soon as she started talking about Tom, I was like, check, check, check. Those were all the checks that were there that she was looking for. So instead of finding someone and then trying to mold them into who she or we want, then you need to find someone that's already there, that's already doing those things, not trying to make them into something that they're not. Agree.